Well, hello. As I sit here waiting for my mommy, I just dropped her after I get her hair did. We're not going to talk about mine. If you've already seen my content, you know I'm a hot mess. My hair matches. Anyway, thought I would just sit here and take the time to uh, do some, I don't know how many multi-part educational videos of um, abortions, women's health care rights, women's health care struggles in general. So let's begin. Now I will say some of the information bombs I will drop on you vary state to state because isn't that fun? State law versus federal. <laughs> this country's a shithole. Now getting back on subject. Students, do I have your attention? Okay, well, so we'll start off with the fact that while men, at the age of 18, if they want to, can seek and get vasectomies. They'll get the typical lecture, blah, 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 but they can get it. No problems, no hassles, right? Okay, Let's, we'll, we'll make that note. Now, to be a woman seeking that same type of reproductive preventions, if you will, you have to be over 30, married. For me, I did not need my husband's signature, um, but for some places, I believe the husband has to agree to sign off on it. Um, you've had to have had at least two children or enough um, miscarriages or um, stillbirths, et cetera, that it's, it's now just in your best interest health wise to go ahead and either do a tubal in some cases, a partial hysterectomy and some, a full hysterectomy, which for men at home, a hysterectomy is when they take out your womb, AKA the uterus and um, your fallopian tubes, everything that internally makes you a woman, right? To, to incubate life, if you will, since it begins a conception. Men can very easily seek in it reproductive health precautions. Women have to be signed off on, and that's only for certain situations. Uh, so there's, there's, there, we're going to start there with just that limitation off the bat that we, we don't really get to choice in the birth control methods we would like to choose. The majority of birth controls, uh, especially the pill, if you're on the pill, um, if you get sick and have to take an Iana antibiotic, now your birth control is void that entire month. You're good. There's you. Yeah. You could raw dog. Cause it ain't going to matter. <laughs> Pray. Do the poll and pray and really pray. I digress. I digress. I digress. Some options of birth control, if you are of a certain weight, are not going to be effective. Um, the IUD. I know there is, it's the 1%. Isn't it always the 1%? Isn't that fucking funny? <laughs> but except this time, it's the 1% of women who have taken yet another long-term precaution available to them. I'm surprised, even though you did everything you could. Nah, here's the baby. IUDs, also not very effective. So what options do women have for reproductive health? There's how many men out there are like, oh, I'm allergic to condoms, or I just don't wanna wear one, it just doesn't feel the same. Okay. You want to, it's cheaper than diapers. It's cheaper than the next 10, 18 years of the shit they're going to be asking for every time you go into the gas station. Which would you rather have? So now that we've covered some of the birth control options available to men and what's available to women. How, how many, um, I mean, I'm going to direct this to, to the Christians now. Um, general question, 
How, how many of you have had, had a miscarriage and had to go and have um, a DNC procedure at a hospital or your OBGYN? How many? I'm going to let you stop and think for a second. Congratulations. You just technically had an abortion. Funny old world, isn't it? Medical procedure. All right, so if it's a medical procedure, how, how could it be murder? And if it was God's will for them to have that baby, then it's God's will for them to decide to not have that baby. Because who are we to interpret God's will? Obviously, you know, for the Christians, you're God. Obviously, was in support of it being available at some time, somehow, some way it's been happening naturally via plant life or grown by your God provided by your God well before science came up with the DNC procedure so clearly it was God's will to bless the world with plant life to save women's lives and later the medical science discoveries to ensure it can be done safely without loss of life. Now we're going to go down into my own personal experience. Yeah, we're going we're to go here because um, maybe it'll offer some perspective to people out there um, who have never had to be in that position to make that choice. Okay, I apologize. Anyone who had tuned in for part one realizes I was outside of my mommy's hair appointment. Got her home safely. She's looking beautiful, feeling beautiful. So we'll continue into um, my experiences as a woman with pregnancies and abortion. I'm ready for your fucking judgment, just so you know. So I'm going to start off with, I was one of those women who never wanted children. Not because I wouldn't be a good parent. I'm an amazing mother. But because this world is, is fucking garbage. And there's so much hate and willing to not contribute another homo sapien um, to be subjected to hate or draining on the, the resources of the world. So as soon as I turned 18, I went to multiple doctors in order to try and achieve a tubal ligation so that I never had to worry about making a choice. Luckily, you know, didn't have any issues until I was 19. I'm living in Maine. The dude I banged was from New York lived in New York. Let him know, hey, this is the situation. He says, ha ha ha, good luck trying to find me to get any kind of support. I'm in a technical program trying to get an associate's degree so I can actually do something with my life and now I'm pregnant. Won't be able to finish my technical program at some point because pregnancy. So then, our future is to be a drain on the welfare system, reliant upon government assistance, which so many of the anti-abortionist sect want to dismantle. I've interrupted my education due to a pregnancy. So my mother cashed in some scratchers and took me to the clinic. And I terminated the pregnancy. I don't regret it. It was the best choice I could have made for me and that child that would have eventually shot out of my baby cannon. Um, what kind of life would I have been to provide for them in that moment in my life? Not a good one. So then, now, I'm 24. I'm an adult, I'm paying taxes. I'm, you know, poor, stable, paycheck to paycheck, just like 
99% of Americans when I've started to date someone. We'd been together maybe a month. I end up pregnant. He already has four children. So we both decide mutually, yes, we're gonna go ahead and terminate the pregnancy. This is the clinic that you see me in front of every Saturday. I was lucky that there were no protesters. I was able to pull into the parking lot with ease, go inside and get my procedure. So we continue dating. We move in together. Approximately nine months later, I become pregnant again. He asked me to get an abortion. I declined. I told him I was gonna have this baby and his involvement was up to him. I'll never forget the conversation he had with his family when he called to let them know that um, he would be providing them with yet another grandchild. They also asked if I would get an abortion. When he said I had declined that, they asked if I would put it up for adoption because they already had too many grandchildren between their three children and it was starting to make them look bad. Nine months and a wedding later, my beautiful daughter destroys my baby cannon. And now she's here. I let one live, you guys. I let one live. <laughs> I think my daughter was getting close to a year old when I um, got pregnant for the fourth time. This one uh, resulted in a miscarriage. Um, and I truly feel that it was the universe intervening on my behalf because all I will say is the trauma that my ex-husband has inflicted upon our child with the situations he's allowed her to be in, um, I would hate to have seen subjected to another one. Anyway, I contact my OBGYN um, as to the options of what the treatment procedure, how they want to proceed. Ideally, the goal is for your body to pass it naturally, um, but sometimes you have to go to a clinic and get a DNC, also known as a motherfucking abortion. Otherwise, it stays inside your body and rots. So you must go through that DNC procedure. It's still only available up to um, a certain a certain time, as you can see in the details of the Planned Parenthood's website. After that, then it's a different medical situation. A lot of those times, um, the baby uh, has perished and it's not a viable pregnancy, but it will sit and rot and kill the woman. Now, for a lot of women, they get past a certain point in their trimesters and the baby, again, something happens, goes wrong, and it's not viable. Now, if you can just take a second and step out of your ignorant shoes and look at this objectively, do you know how traumatic it is for a woman to have to carry a baby, have it perish inside of you and then if it's past a certain term you're forced to carry it and deliver it just to bury it why they will not perform a c-section on women who are in this situation is beyond me so for all you judges out there saying that we're murderers
if that's the case, and we're going to burn in hell, you're going to be burdened right with us with your judgment. So I'll see you there. And for any woman who's had to have one regardless of your reasons, I love you and I support you. And not everyone is garbage. After that, uh, I was able to get my tubes tied. I was very persistent with the doctor that I had seen. I was 27 at this point um, and had had four pregnancies, one non-viable, one live birth, and two terminated. That's how they have you fill it out on paperwork. Now my daughter is the best thing that has ever happened to me. But like I said, this world is so full of hate and she was four when she had to experience some of the worst hate a man could do to a woman. So in conclusion to my journey thus far, had I not had those two procedures when I did, my daughter wouldn't have the mother she has today. A warrior capable of taking on anything that comes our way who has the emotional strength and maturity to handle the situations and is adult enough to make sure the bills get paid. So, see how abortions can save lives rather than murder them? Because it saved my life twice and it has saved my daughter's because now she has a life where she wants for nothing. She goes to good schools, has a good life. One I would not have been able to provide the first two. Thank you.